I think the most important thing for students to think about is the role that Congress has played in American democracy. It is the most powerful legislature in the world and one of the most powerful institutions of the federal government. Um, it's unique in that regard. Uh, there are no other legislatures like it in developed democracies. So the framers envisioned Congress as the most powerful player in the separation of power system. They also place some restrictions on what Congress can do with its power. Yet over time, Congress has expanded its power tremendously, uh, arguably in ways that the framers never imagined. Uh, the Congress has largely done this through creative uses of the Commerce Clause of the Constitution. The Commerce Clause grants Congress the power to regulate interstate commerce. But through a series of, of uh, different legislative acts and a series of court cases, Congress has basically used the Commerce Clause to regulate any kind of commerce, commerce that is, that is arguably purely intrastate. Uh, this culminated in the Supreme Court case known as Wickard v. Filburn, where essentially the Supreme Court said that behavior that, that took place within, strictly within state boundaries still affected interstate commerce because a person chose not to participate in the, in the market. And so this essentially was the last barrier that existed for Congress to expand its power to regulate pretty much every aspect of, of American political, economic, and social life. But in the past three decades, the Supreme Court has started to push back against the expansion of congressional authority. There have been several key cases where the Supreme Court has basically rejected the Commerce Clause argument that justifies the use of congressional power. So the framers envisioned Congress as being a key player in the separation of power system. Yet Congress today is made up of 435 individuals in the House of Representatives and 100 individuals in the United States Senate. For Congress to get anything done, you've got to form coalitions. You've got to form either majority coalitions or as in, is the case in the Senate now, supermajority coalitions. And so you have all these different preferences, all these different demands that have to come together and coalesce in some form or another in order for Congress to exercise the tremendous power that the framers granted it as an institution. That can be very difficult, especially when you consider uh, that the United States is, is such a heterogeneous nation. Um, many times, the Congress comes together and overcomes these differences, overcomes the variety of, of preferences and demands that pull it in different directions. Oftentimes, it doesn't. And especially lately, Congress has had tremendous difficulty in meeting the demands that have been placed upon it. And that in part has helped to contribute to historically low approval ratings for the United States Congress.